out tracks. He does. Well, that, that's why I do at the flea market. Has out tracks. All right. So John chapter uh, one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a pen. Oh. Lord God the Father, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord, that we may grow for you, Lord. Lord, you give us facilities that would meet these needs, Lord God. I know we're meeting under no trespass. Lord God, I just ask you to bless now. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. So, John chapter 1. Continuing the Gospel of John, which we looked at at many subjects about Jesus. We looked at him as the Word. As the Creator, as God, again that, that throws out many religions. It says in John 1:1, 1, 1, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Now we're talking about those wases as that was in the creation act. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. <coughs> Without Him was not anything made that was made. A new, a new verse. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So Jesus is the light. And the life is the light of men. Light gives life. If you were to take a plant and put it in a closet with no light, it would not survive. Uh, the light shineth in darkness. The darkness is man, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 19. John three nineteen. This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that's Jesus Christ. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Man is evil. He's wicked. He's vile. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. Least his deeds should be reproved. Now, the life and light is Jesus. And many, many, many do not want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. Oh, shame. You do any kind of public ministry... Whether you preach on the street, you go door knocking, handing out gospel tracts, you will find out that many do not want that light. They are against Jesus Christ. I'm waiting for somebody to come up to me one time and say, well, everybody just loves Jesus. I used to hear that in the beginning of it, but it's not true. Today you've got something called that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That's impossible unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, Romans 6.23. <coughs> Romans chapter 6, 23. And we're going to look at the condition of man. He's in darkness. Like Genesis 1, when God showed up, the earth was in darkness. And darkness is the absence of God. Romans 6, 23. Now, 6, 23 is written to Christians. I know we use it to evangelize. But the chapter is written to those that are saved. So if the wages of sin is death is written to a Christian. I had a guy tell me, oh, you know, if you're a Christian, you don't ever save. And it, you, you don't ever sin. And if you sin, you're not a Christian. Then why is this written here? So I'm, if the Lord tarries, I'm still going to die. Why? Because I'm still a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. That is the condition of man. Every man waits for a paycheck. Amen. He does 40 hours, he does 20 hours, he does 10 hours, if he does one hour, he's waiting for that paycheck. A man has sinned, he's done sin, he's done all kinds of sins, he's gone against God, he's rebelled against God, he's gone against human nature, and there's coming a paycheck it's called death. Now, I know for sure that when a man dies, a, a doctor will fill out a certificate of death, and they'll write on there, heart attack, hit by a bus, natural cause. No, the real foundation of death is sin. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. That's the inherited from that That's inherited. That comes by our, our parents to our grandparents, by great-grandparents to our great-grandparents. And it defies evolution because we are not getting better. That's right. 
No man can believe in evolution and believe in the government and the presidency of this United States of America because it's not getting better. This nation is not getting better. Man dies because he is a sinner. That's his condition, darkness. That's his outlook. Man is born to die. Okay, think about it. Hold that little baby in your arms, just minutes old. Oh, little child, great expectations, you're going to die. And you do not and know when. And it will when. populate heaven or hell. And every mother That's that right. con every mother that conceives, I didn't say born, I said conceives. They say 18 hours, the baby's heartbeat. 18 every, weeks. 18 weeks. Every child that is conceived, to fly with other people, is going to populate heaven or hell. One day. So man is conditioned. So. A child that is one day old, if it dies, I have a brother that lasted three or four hours and died. Sorry, you that. Now he did not commit no sin. He didn't lie, he didn't steal, he didn't cheat. Well, the wages of sin is death. How did he die? Why did he die? Because we're born in the sin nature of Adam. Mm -hmm. So somebody, and we've had people come up to it, you know, I've never sinned. Yes, you have. Check your blood. There you go. You if you have. get the flu, if you get a disease, if you get an informity in your Bible, it is in your blood. Your blood's defiled. So with John 3.16 now, and with today's John chapter 1, we're looking at the condition of man. And you get people up there, oh, I'm number one, I'm the greatest. No, you, a little bug will take you out. Now, last week, I wasn't well, I was in pain, I was suffering because in both my ears was something in there on the back. And yesterday I was sick. And I've had, I've had times, we've all had times, you get this little bug in your body, you don't want to get up, you don't want to do nothing, leave me alone. I know how that is. But we're the greatest, we're the one, most wonderful person in the world, and yet a little disease can go through a nation as Africa and wipe out populations and blow Ebola and all those diseases. One single cell in our body can destroy our life. We could have right now, in, in us right now. Sorry. thank you. No we can have a little, little blood clot that's going to ruin the rest of our life. A little mosquito gets you and you get malaria. Or AIDS. Or AIDS. Or so that's man. That's how great we are. And there are some people out there, they will sing how great I am, say how great God is. But let's look at God, John 3, 16. And we're going to look at a misquote here that people do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now let's tear this verse down. First of all, it says, for God so loved the world, not the earth. It's not Mother Earth. The Bible will tell us, Peter says, that the earth is going to burn up. It's going to, the Bible tells us in Isaiah it's going to wrap up like a scroll is going bye-bye at the face of God. When God shows up on the great white throne, the earth says, I'm out of here. The heavens say, I'm out of here. Another thing about John 3.16, says, For God so loved. See that D? It makes it past tense. And people will say, well, God loves us today. That love is past tense. Now, I can say for the four of us at this table now, and people who probably listen to this video, that goes to us. God loves us today through Jesus Christ. Because I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior, God loves me. I am adopted into His family. I am a child. I am a son of God by Jesus Christ. Now, for God so loved the world, you get somebody, you meet somebody, they heard the gospel. We've been four years at, at, the, at the farmer's market. We've preached the same gospel for four years. There are people who have not received God. There are people who will reject God. There are people who will mock God. There are people who make fun of us because we're preaching. There are people who will cuss us out. There are people who will reject God. There are people who will not listen to what the Bible says being free. God loves them? Absolutely not. And that, for God so loved, when you come to Calvary and God brings you Calvary and there is Jesus Christ hanging on that cross, bleeding, suffering, and dying for sin, and you walk away not believing, there is, that's it of the love. Mm -hmm. 
You are now in witness. You are now, God says, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. You are wicked. And that is so to, to the point that there's only one sin that will put you in hell. Rejecting Jesus Christ is my Savior. Amen. There are people who come up to me, I don't know if they're honest, I don't know if they're trying to mock, but, you know, what do you think about the sin of, of uh, homosexuality? He said, what about the sin of lying? What about the, the, the sin of, of stealing? Listen, your sin, I tell them, is no greater than my sins. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's true. There's only one payment, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin in the world. That love is past sense. It's at Calvary. To continue God's love, you must come out of that empty tomb as a believer. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you get adopted into family. Then God becomes your father and he loves you. But he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Now, when we were at Reve Revelation 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. So man is in the absence of anything perfect and right as he continues his life without God, without Jesus Christ. God had to provide for man. Man can't do nothing. If man could do it, then why would God have to give? That's charity. That's not just love, giving. That's charity. That's showing forth your love. That's giving your love. He gave, begotten Son. He gave His only begotten Son. So get capital S. It's only by Jesus Christ. That whosoever, that's me, that's any sinner, that's anybody, whosoever, you can preach to anybody with that man. You can go anywhere with that message. You can parachute, just jump out of a plane, parachute anywhere where you land, say whosoever. But see, there's a problem. Hold your place in John chapter 3 and come to Revelation 20. Keep your place in John 3. In Revelation 20, Revelation 20, Verse 15. Revelation 20, verse 15. Looking at whosoever. That's any person. That could be somebody sitting here. That could be somebody just walking by and hearing the gospel. That could be somebody you're directing the gospel to. It says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. That whosoever has rejected Jesus Christ as his Savior will not do what God has told him. John 3.16 is a whosoever that the gospel was presented to him. Now, we're told in Luke 16 that there is a man named Lazarus. He goes into Abraham's bosom, Old Testament. Christ had not died, was not buried, and not rose from the grave yet. We're told about a rich man. What's the rich man's name? I have no idea. Not written in the God loves everybody. But that whosoever I preach to, and that whosoever walks away and will not ever mm -hmm. receive Christ. Now maybe later on somebody else will witness to him, he'll come a, a gospel track, man, he'll get saved. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. But if he walks away from the gospel, never ever believe in the gospel, what's his name when he comes before God, the great wife of No, has name. That whosoever. For me, the Bible says, my name is written. See, it said, whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're saved, you have your name written. It's known. If you reject your condition in front of God, if God loves the sinner, God doesn't even know your name. How's that? Now, under Christ, under the salvation of the cross that Christ suffered and died for me, was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures, that I have believed that with my heart. God says, I know Stiley. And that name Stiley is born under sin through his parents and his great grandparents. So when I go to heaven, the Bible says, I'm going to get a new name. What advantage is through Christ that we have? Matthew 8 12. So an unsaved man is not loved by God. An unsaved man has no name amongst God. And you got to think now. I, I 
speculating, let me say that because I'm not sure, because I have, particularly I have unsaved family members, my dad will mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And if I say, Lord, are you still keeping hmm? John 3? No, Matthew 12. I mean, Matthew 8, 12. Okay. Matthew 8, 12. And the thing is, when we pray for our loved ones and we mention their name, are they really known by God? And that's just a speculation thrown out there. And, and again, we're looking at the condition of man. Matthew 8, 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast... The children of the kingdom, that's Jews. Matthew's written to Jews. These are God's elect people. These are the nation of nations above the, of nations, even above the Americans. There is no other nation under God but the Jews. And you would think that all the Jews. And but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those are Jews that have rejected what God has to say. Those are Jews who have not obeyed the commandments of God, the law of Moses, the covenant of Abraham. People who have not done what God has said to do. And yet, there are people today under the church age who have not done what God has told them. To, and it's for, there's no list of commandments for today, the church age. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's, that's simple. God, look at my certificate. God, look at my membership. God, look at me. God, look what I've done. God, look where I am. Look, God, look what I'm doing. That's not the answer. And when we defile God and go against God, it's called rebellion. God told Adam, do not eat of that fruit. He ate the fruit. That is rebellion. So, if God will cast His nation, His children, Israel, into a lake of fire that burneth forever, what do you think He's going to do for a Gentile? When He's made the possibilities of salvation in the church age so simple that He Himself has took the penalty of sin upon Himself. And the, the, the outcome of man without God is what? It's darkness. Weeping. Weeping without tears. Because that, that rich man said, Oh, if I could just get a drop of water from my tongue. Why didn't he just grab a little drop off his eyelid? Because there is no sweat. There is no tears of water. And gnashing of teeth. You're just grinding your teeth. You've got the worst toothache forever and ever and ever. And there's no relief. That's the outcome of a man that will not believe and trust on God as a Savior. That's not a very good help. And yet when the Bible speaks about eternal life through Jesus Christ, everlasting life through Jesus Christ, those are who have believed on God, done what God has told them to do. And he does not ever reference hell in the lake of fire as everlasting life, though it is everlasting life. But what God even in his own capability says, that's not life. John the Baptist sums it up. It's the wrath of God that bite us forever. In Matthew 22, 13. And the more you get to know God and love God and read His Bible and try to do right, try to tell people about Jesus, the more your heart burns That's true. and aches for them. And if you see people do it and they mock the people they're witnessing to. And they're, that's not right. It's not right. Matthew 22, verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him in outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when we read Luke's account of a man in hell, he's got eyes, he's got a tongue to speak, he's got lips, he's got ears. Your soul has all your body parts. As it goes off today, talking about man's condition, if you go off into hell, your soul goes with all your body parts and never burns up. It never goes away. You can take the body today and burn it and it's going to be ashes and you're going to be dead. 
You can take a soul and cast it off into, into hell and it's not ever going to be dead. Fingers, your nose, your feet, your toes. Outer darkness, you can't see. Oh, when I get to hell, I'm going to party, but you're not going to be able to see them. You can't even see your finger before your eyes. And yet, how did the rich man see Lazarus? That's what I've been wondering. That's weird. That's weird. Yeah. It's a fire without light. Huh. And that's and that's capable. You can produce that fire in the laboratory, and they have to put a sign on that Bunsen burner. There's a flame here, even though you can't see it. So what's even worse that oh you're gonna burn in hell? People think oh flames and fire and all that. You're not even gonna see the fire burning you. You're just going to have agony. And I don't even know what other word could describe, but the wrath of God abide you. You can't even see it. There's no relief. Gnashing of teeth. You'll have your teeth. You ever have a toothache? Mm -hmm. yes, they can get severe. I've had my teeth removed. I had a big infected. That's why I had to lose these teeth. Because way down where the root was, it got me. My whole face was swelled up. Ouch. And you can't. And let me let me be literal. You cannot see the dentist in hell. Yeah. And really? he can't help you. He's in agony too. Imagine as much. <laughs> imagine as much as just a toothache. Except that he just, then as he, much then as then a, he wouldn't be in hell. He'd be in hell. Exactly. As much as a toothache pain. Put all the aches and pains you ever had. He never ever had. As you suffer third degree burns, 100% of your body, forever. That's where man is. That's the great I am. I, I scored the touchdown. Whoopee, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> really? And the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice when a sinner comes to Christ as their favor. Not because you put a ball through a hoop. Uh, Matthew 25, 30. And this is what men don't want to believe. They, they, there are preachers out there. I was going to say, I'll say this first. There are preachers out there that have air-conditioned hell because that's where they're going. There are men that made hell. Oh, we're going to have Budweiser. We're going to have beer. We're going to have parties. and all. Mm. They try to make it more better than what it actually is. And we come across all the time in any public ministry, oh, Satan rules, or, yeah, we'll party in time. We're, you know, we're hell-bound. You don't even realize what you're saying. They're blinded. They have no light. And if they have no light, as we already saw in John chapter 3, they go off into a place literally where there's no light forever. Imagine us Christians. I don't know where, but let's say a hospital bed or your own bed, wherever it's bed you're lying in, hotel bed, whatever. Let's say it's your time for the Lord to call you home. There you are. There's your family. You close those eyes and you've got this marvelous bright light that just kills you. And then next thing you know, you see Jesus. There he is. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, forever to be with the Lord. That's your soul. All right, you got another guy who's never done what God's told him to do. He's lying in the bed. He sees his family. He sees the light of the, of the, in the ceiling and all that. He closes his light. He opens up the place. He can he absolutely know nothing. And he's burning, and he's suffering, and he doesn't even know why. Imagine somebody who, who goes by death, that's lost, never received Christ. They go from burning alive to burning in hell. That's why, we, that's why the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. There's no other way. Angels are not going to witness to people. God is not going to knock them on the head and say, get saved. You're not going to have any of these things at these church. It's got to be a Christian has to go out there and give the revelation. Uh, Matthew 25, 30. Cassie, the unprofitable servant. Now, this is not the Christian. We're in Matthew. They're unprofitable servants of the church age, but they'll still go to heaven. You see how people can misapply the scriptures. But I'm looking at what man is into darkness outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Three times. 
Hell is darkness. It is a lightless place. Why? Because God's not there because God is light. There's no love there because God is love. Your friends are not going to care about you and have anything to do with you in hell at all. They got their own problems. They're burning for their own sins. So that's hell. Oh. It's not a kind of one place. And yet, many people, I say many because that's a Bible definition, many will not listen. And today, I would say as the strike of midnight has crossed over to 1, 1201 Wednesday. Since that time, all over the world, and yet still coming on to Wednesday in some places, how many people have woke up in this place today? And how many were told not to go? How many have gone by the prayers against the prayers of loved ones? How many have gone because a Christian has not told them? Ma uh, let's see, Matthew 12, 3, I did that. Yep. Matthew 4, 16. Matthew 4, 16. Again, we're looking at the condition of what man is. It's not good. Unless Jesus Christ comes in. Matthew 4.16 The condition of man, he's dark. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death, life is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So here's darkness. Here's no life. Here's the wrath of God. And Jesus shows up. Now this is when Jesus is about 30 years old. He enters into ministry. And yet, when you go in all the world and preach the gospel, you are going to people who are in darkness. You are going to people in the region of the shadow of death. They have no light. And then when you bring Jesus to them, here comes the light walking. And you're preaching. We may not see the kingdom of heaven at hand. We may see that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's the same thing as the ministry of Jesus Christ when you witness. The nation of Israel had no idea what was going on until Jesus showed up. There are people out there today that have no idea until you bring Jesus unto them. People, like I said, why are you, we had a guy cuss us out the other day, why are you here, people don't want to hear you, because there's someone there that has not heard the word, who right. needs to hear the word, or there are people there need to be reminded, 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 reminded. It'd be a foolish person after four, five, six, seven years of hearing the same gospel every week to end up in a place where we preach again. They still want to sit in darkness. They don't want that light. And the condition of man can change. You do not have to go to hell. That's right. You do not have to burn. Do I go to religion? Religion didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Do I do good things? Good things didn't show up. He said the light came. The light sprung up. And what's that light? Verse 17, Jesus showed up. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting nets in the sea, and they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, for I'll make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed. There's converts. Those are people who believe God. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus said, no. again, we're in the Old Testament. We're in the Gospel. He said, come on, boys, come follow me. They did. And they inherited an everlasting life. Because they did what God told them to do. He said, follow me. Today we put that same invitation to people. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Some will come, few. Many will not. Many will not. So the condition of man now is he's, he's in darkness. There is light. That light is only by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But if I burn candles, absolutely not. If I go out and walk old ladies across, absolutely not. Not of works, least any man boast. That light is not a big lighter. It's not a match. It's not a candle. That light is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of a virgin, of the tribe of, of Jew, the Jews, of the tribe of Judah, of God, who is God. You've got to make sure you have the right Jesus because Paul born said... Because Paul says there's another Jesus out there. See, why do you, you know, why do you antagonize the Jehovah Witnesses? Because they got the wrong Jesus. And I may come across a Jehovah Witness who's brand new, fresh in the life, and I want to put some doubt into his heart. They say he was a prophet, good man, or a prophet. Michael. Yeah, I know. Michael. They don't say he was the son of God. And he died on the stake. Yeah, Stakes you put on a grill. Right. Mm -hmm. Luke yeah, 1, 79. Luke 1, 79. Luke 1, 79. Now we're moving to that light that we read in John. Man is in darkness. He stumbles at the night. And when he goes to a religion, he's getting darker. When he runs to what he can do, he's getting darker. In Luke 1, 79. To give light to them that sit in darkness, there's our cross reference, mm -hmm. and in the shadow of death, there's our cross reference, to guide our feet into the way, the truth of life, of peace. And that peace, oops, sorry, cross reference is, I believe it's Ezekiel, it says, There is no, thus saith the Lord, there is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked. I forget where that one is. So that light, is Jesus. Because let's go back to John 1, 4, and 5, and let's look at what we've been studying so far. John 1, 4, and 5. You can't have life without light. And man produces artificial light, but Jesus Christ is the light. So John 1, 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men and light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not so that light is Jesus Christ darkness is man the, we'll read further we'll say later on that he came on his own the Jews and they didn't even know who he was with the scriptures I am told there are 48 prophecies of the life and death of Jesus Christ and no one recognized it So when we run to Genesis 1, wait a minute, we're going back to Genesis 1 again. Mm -hmm. Did we do that? Times. Scripture is scripture. It all runs together. Genesis 1, 3. Genesis 1, 3. Looking at the light of Jesus Christ. Oh, we'll look at well, verse 1 1. Start in the beginning. Mm -hmm. God created the heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness without God. That's the condition of man. Every man came from earth. It was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. Good light. And divide the light from the darkness. The light in the darkness is still there. Satan is there. The light, Jesus, is there. And God called the light day, day of the Lord, capital D. And the darkness he called night. And even in the morning, we're the first day. So let's go over to verse number 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, the sun. The lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament, in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and do 
divide the light and the darkness, and God saw it was good to even in the morning where the fourth day. That's not Jesus. That's our lunar moon. That's our solar sun. There is light before our sun and moon ever show up, and that light is Jesus Christ. Now we tell time, and we plant crops by that sun, moon, and those stars. We set our eternal life upon what we do with the light that is God. Now, there are people who worship Baal, Zeus, the sun god, the solar god, the ring around your saint's head, the, uh, I forget what they call that. Halo? Or halo, but there's another name. The umbas, which is, which, is a, which is a sunbeam. That's not the God that's going to help. That's not the light you need, the sun and the moon, to get you saved. Sunrise service, that's not going to do nothing for you. You need that light was before the sun and before the moon. The one that created the sun and the moon. That's the light you need. And even from the beginning of this planet Earth, God is dividing that light from darkness. That there's that light and there's a the darkness. And we're not to walk in the middle. So you can choose a light or you can choose a darkness. The Earth was before... In, there was a time that the earth was absent from God. It was dark and it was cold. Man, one day, he's going to, without, the, without God, the absence of God, he's going to be dark and he's going to be hot. There's an ice age in Genesis 1. There's a, what do you call it, a heat age, a fire age yet to come. John 8, 22. I mean, 8.12. John 8.12. John 8.12. So when you look at somebody, and they've never believed on God, never believed on Jesus Christ, don't look at them as a fool. They're darkened. They don't know Satan has lied to them. That's right. John 8.12. There's another passage we can read. Wait, 12. Then spake Jesus, so this is Jesus, again unto the saying, I am the light of the world, not the earth. I am the light of the world. For God so loved the world, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Well, that's not getting up 2 o'clock in the morning and going to the refrigerator to get yourself a drink. It's got to be beyond the virtual reality of life of darkness in the middle of the night. That's not that kind of darkness. That's our spiritual condition. When you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you come out of darkness and you are in light. You are going the way that God wants you to go, Jesus Christ. And to you, he that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the sun shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him, John 1, 4. And Jesus says, I am in that light, and if you were to believe on me and trust and put your faith in me, you're no longer in darkness. You are no longer going to hell. So, with that verse right there, there is no way you can say, oh, I'm a Christian and lose it and go to hell. Because you are in light. Now, you may chose to go to the darkness, but your spiritual condition. Now, God told Adam again, if you eat that fruit, you're going to die. Adam ate that fruit. Chapter 5, he died. Mm -hmm. Is God a liar? Nope. No. That spiritual condition of Adam died. God says, all right, I've got to clothe you with sheepskin, and you've got to get out of my, my presence. You're no longer welcome in the garden. Get out of the pool. You're not playing here no more. You are a sinner. And then he died physically, chapter 5. So when a verse like that, you say, well, I, I walk in darkness in the middle of the night. That's not that kind of darkness. Your new life, your eternal life, the Bible says, Paul writes to us, that you are seated in heavenly place. I'm not going to heaven. I'm already there. Just my body and my soul hasn't caught up to it yet. But I'm there. And one other verse I want to look at in John 8, 44. About 
people who are deceived. People who don't know. People who don't understand. John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil. Now, we that are saved are born of God. We are adopted by God to be the children of God. We can honestly call God Father. Those that are in the darkness, their father is who? It's the devil. You need to get adopted. You need to be born again because you got the wrong dad. I know I'm using that word, you know, reverently. Every man that is born, born into sin, born into darkness has a father and the father is Satan. Until you come to Jesus Christ and get born again, get the Holy Spirit and then you get adopted, you get changed of fathers. And let's read about this father. Ye of your father the devil, the lust that's not God of your father ye will do. Satan's lustful. Desires, wants, covets. He wants God's throne. Paul will read to us that coveting and lust are the same. Satan wants that throne of God. He wants it right now. He wants what Jesus has to offer. He says, Jesus, if you'll kneel down and worship me, I'll give you all this. There are people out there so hungry, driven to get power and authority. That comes from Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning and a bold not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That's religion. Satan is the father of religion. Ooh, yeah, religion. How about when, when we as Christians tell lies? Who's the father of the lies? I thought God was our father. Satan's the father. That's when we're sinning. We take on our the wrong father's nature when we tell a lie. Mm -hmm. Even if it's for a joke. Even if it's for a gag. Even if it's for a lie. It's a lie is a lie. God never lied. The Bible says in three places God is not able, cannot, will not ever lie to you. And yet Christians do it. And we are told in the very pages that Satan is the foundation. Satan is the source of lies. And that's religions all around. He's got all kinds of lies to be right with God, but Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. There you go. Amen. Satan and Jesus are counters from each other. As what? What would be a great description as far as Jesus and as far as Satan? Light and darkness. Light and darkness. Uh, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, 46. So we see it's truly Jesus Christ. Jesus is that light. Now, as you turn to John 12, 46, let me give you an illustration. You ever had anybody, in the, you're in the dark. You're at a campsite, middle of the night, you're somewhere in the bedroom, dark, and somebody just turned that light on real quick. It hurts. <laughs> What are you doing? I need to see something. Really, you could have gave me some warning. And when some houses I've been in, my own, you go in the kitchen, you flap that light, and there's a whole bunch of bugs that run off. Well, that's the condition of man. And you've got to understand when you bring the gospel to them the very first time, oh, wow, they turned that off. That's like looking at halogens. Especially if it's the first time ever them hearing about God. you got to understand, you got to bring it to them slowly. you got to be proper. you got to be right. you got to be loving. you got to be caring. you got to be patient. And you may be just planting the seed and not watering. Maybe later on. So that light. Oh, John 12, 46. 46 and 47. I am come a light into the world. And there's a whosoever again. That gospel's to anybody. Everybody. White, yellow, black, red, 
from the sun too much. Male, female, even if you don't know what you are. Young, old, in between, teenage. In the eyes of God that God loves you, you are a whosoever. Believe it. We'll get that believing later. Believe it. Just say this prayer. Did they believe it? Well, I don't know. You're in dangerous ground. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. On me, well, who would be saying that? Verse 44, Jesus cried and said, Do you realize Jesus has the nerve to say that he is the only one? And you're going to deny that he's God? If he's not God, he is a good liar, isn't he? You better not take away his Godship. That'd be like me going into the city of Daytona Beach saying, I am the mayor and you guys are going to do what I tell you to do. <laughs> I do not have that authority. And they'll be laughing me out purposely and wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Now if I was the mayor and I walked into town hall and said, listen, I'm the mayor of this city. We're going to do it the right way we're, and we're going to do it this way. If you don't like it, you can go move to another city. I would have that right. Now, l listen. He says, I have come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. I am the only one. Now, if he's not God, what gives him the right to say that? That he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And people are going to find out at the great white throne, they're going to go in whatever name that's not Jesus. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I you're a whosoever. Isn't that interesting? And there are some people who go to church Sunday morning and they think that God in heaven is so happy that there they are in their pew. And the question is, are you known in heaven? Many are not. And that's a Bible. Uh, 46, I am come light into the world that whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words, oh, 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 you mean not a television program? Not a puppet show? Uh -oh. And believe not. Believe not. So there's a belief. There is belief that Jesus is who he says he is. And if you do not believe who he says he is, you are without name, and your end is darkness, lake of fire. God does not know you, and God does not love you. Believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, the first advent, but to save the world. That's the first advent. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent, that's the judgment on all those that will not believe. So it's truly, honestly, Jesus Christ that saves and no other. Romans 13, 12. Romans 13, 12. So man can have light, but he's got to have the right light and he's got to be careful because Satan... We'll come up with an imitation line. Mm -hmm. Satan is good at imitating Jesus. Very good. That Paul says there's another Jesus. Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. You mean turn every light on in the house? Absolutely not. If Christ is the light and Satan is the darkness, what is Paul saying? Get rid of Satan. Get rid of Lucifer. Get rid of the evilness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let's give an example. Verse 13. Let us walk honestly. Well, who's John 8, 44? That's not honestly John 8, 44, Satan. So Paul, and I didn't mean to read, read John 8, 44. Isn't it God? 
how wonderful God is. Amen. We read John 8, 44, that Satan is the liar, and Paul says walk honestly. That means walking contrary to what Satan does. Walk not in his ways, walk in the ways of light. So, even if I am saved, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I get saved. I am walking spiritually in the light. I am going to heaven. I know it. My name is written in the last book of life. But I can walk in darkness and not lose it. I can choose. There is a free will right there. Which I knew that verse last mm -hmm. Friday. Paul says, walk to the light, not darkness. So you can, you know what? I can do whatever I want. Or I could walk in the gray area, and gray area is not good either. So we are given a choice. We are given an option. Paul says, I advise you to do right and not to do wrong. 2 Corinthians 6.14 2 Corinthians 6.14 We saw Romans 13. That's our conduct. That's our life. Second okay. Corinthians 7. I mean, Second Corinthians 6:14. Mm -hmm. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteous with unrighteous, and what commune with light with darkness? Paul goes for far to say, and it's almost like a command that. You have no business hanging out with, with Satan's people. Mm -hmm. You have no business having friends with people who do not honor and love and obey Jesus Christ, the light. You are supposed to be walking with people of light and not with people of darkness. Now you go out there and tell them about Jesus, but unequally yoked, that means you're tied together. And that's especially strong for marriages. Marriages ought not to be I'm saved and he's unsaved, or he's saved and she's unsaved. We ran with a woman a couple weeks ago about that. She saved, she knew she married the wrong guy, and now the consequences is they're not here. So this is not just talking about marriages. Though. It's talking about marriages in your friendships. And friendships. And friendships. They're going to tear you down. There are people today not serving Lord because they went with the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. And the lowest common denominator is where you will go. Most cases, people will drag you down and rather pull you up. It's easy to be dragged down and go up. Now, if you have like faith, if you've got somebody who's walking in like they're saved and they want to do right, all right, there's great chances of pulling them up. But if you've got somebody who's lost and they're antagonizing you and they're making you upset and they are... You know, insulting you on that. That's, you know, you're going to feel bad. You're going to like, you know what, man, I just give it. And that's the vice of Paul. There again, it's the light and the darkness compared to friendship. Compared to, you know, others. Again, there's Jesus people, God's people, who are children of God. And then there's our Satan people. Child of sin. Ephesians 5.11 Ephesians 5.11 Ephesians 5.11 Again, we're looking now we're, we've gone from man he's darkness, he's come to Christ for the light, and now what do we do? How do we live? What is our expectation by the Bible? I'm saved, what am I supposed to do? As Genesis 1 God divided the light from the darkness Ephesians 5.11 God divided the light from the darkness. Ought we also divide the light from the darkness in our lives, in our conduct, in our activities? And then Paul says, listen, I would that you get rid of the darkness and do the light. That's an option. you got the free will. As I was saying, how that guy said, you know, there is no free will. Well, we read uh, Romans 13.12, there was a free will. When we uh, just rehashing with 13, 12, I said, I wish I had that verse when that guy was there. He says, I'd rather you walk in light and not darkness. Mm -hmm. But in Ephesians 5, 11, 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ball them out. Tell them what they're wrong. Walk up to that woman and say, what did Thomas say? We had one time, we've been all over as a family witnessing and, and signs and gospel tracts and wherever this opportunity. Would be. Well, they had this, this community, every religion get together one time where we come from Connecticut. And we're there, we're going to pass out gospel tracts, we were going to preach, we are going to hold our signs, but we backed off, let them do what they were going to do, and a woman came up, a woman, pastor, came up. Well, why don't you come and join us? Absolutely not. Not your wickedness. Oh, what's wrong with us? You'll find out about ten minutes once I start preaching. I'm not going to go and join with them. I'm not going to be in their crowd. There's, there's been a few Catholic weddings and funerals. I said, no, I ain't going because I, I do not want to be seen there. I don't belong there. I'll meet you at the cemetery. It, it was a funeral. Went to the wrong one. But that... We have no business being where they're being. Now, we go where they go to preach the gospel and try to tell them about Jesus. Because that's what the Bible says. What's he say? Go in all the world. <laughs> go where they are, but don't take fellowship with them. Don't be part of them. You're in darkness. You're light. Walk in the light and God will reward you. God will be merciful and loving to you. And again, it's God versus Satan. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. God wants us clean. That's what He wants, pretty much. To sum it all up, He wants us clean living, but we fail. 1 John 1, 9. If, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. See, God knew we're going to be sinners. God knew we're still going to sin. That's why he threw that verse in there. <laughs> and he knew in the Old Testament they were going to sin because, hey, if you do it, bring the lamb, bring the goat, bring... As long as you push your heart to trying, reaching out. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness... Uh oh, remember Revelation, I mean, Genesis 1. There it is. So Genesis 1 is not just Genesis 1, it's throughout the Bible. Has shined in our hearts. Well, wait a minute, stay there in 2 Corinthians. I'm going to go to Genesis 1. I'm going to read to you, and it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Everybody jokes about that verse, don't they? You know, when they turn the lights on, let there be lights. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light was good. So when I got saved, God said, Shine that light on that miserable rotten heart that has trusted my, my son as his savior, angels spark up the bands and start celebrating, a man has received the light. Luke says that when a man receives Christ, when that lost sheep comes back into the fold, the angels celebrate and rejoice in heaven. And God says, just as he did in Genesis 1, that wicked heart that's vile, that was under the power of Satan, put some light in that heart. Not too much now. Yeah, he just got saved. Just got saved. Uh, what did I say? Verse 6. Has shined in our hearts. Just like Genesis 1. So that means before I was saved, when I was under the fatherhood of Satan, I had an ice age in my heart. Mm -hmm. So I could not say with a heart, I loved anybody. I didn't know what love was because God is love. But lust, I think we read about that earlier. You can't know love unless you know God. You can't know light unless you know God. Verse 40. The light, what's that light? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, not religion. Not works. Not what I think. When you receive the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture, and was buried and arose again the same day and rose again three days and three nights according to the scripture. At that moment you believe with your heart, Romans chapter ten. I still remember the day I received Christ when I opened up my eyes and got up and was like, Wow. Amen. It was like the greatest shower I've ever, ever had. 
all the burdens were washed away. All the sins were washed away. And every once in a while, Satan will come back and try to open up that closet. Now, I may see things in that closet, but if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive my sins. God looks in that closet like, I don't see what you're talking about. I don't see it. Wow, you know, Lord, I believe what you just read. Really? You believe? Yes. All right, let me show you some more light. As I just said, what, what light did we just see today? I, we read from John 8, 44. That was not in my notes. And then when we went to the next verse, light, God says, now read that part. Whoa. Whoa. And I did not ever mean to read John 8, 44. But God says, I'll show you. Since you are preaching my word, since you obey my word, and the more you believe, the more you read, the more you take in, the more you get, the more and more light you get. When, when, what happens to that final light? That final light is when you get to New Jerusalem, that light is God in itself. No sun, no moon, and a brand new body with a brand new eyeball that you can handle. There's no way there that is dark. You can't Amen. go anywhere where you don't have the light. That's right. Amen. God told Moses, you cannot see my glory unless a man dies. That's true. There is coming a light that we can't even describe, never mind New Jerusalem. And then think about this, that New Jerusalem has all kinds of, of stones and gems that man doesn't even know from them. What is that color going to be that. when God's light reflects through that? A street of gold. And you're not going to need sunglasses. That's right. Amen. See, we're going to get to that ultimate point that where God wants us. Absolute bright, bright, holy brightness. Uh, okay, is this Second Corinthians? Let me talk about Satan and his ministers. Was it First Corinthians eleven? I know it's eleven. Oh. Yes, eleven thirteen. Eleven thirteen. And fourteen. Second. Right, Second Corinthians 11, 13. Now, here's another one that's not in my notes. But let's look at Satan and his light. He has a light. Well, let's watch. Second Corinthians 11, 13. This is Paul's warning to a carnal church. 11, 13. Oh, he transforms into an angel. Okay. For such are false apostles. They're not real. They're liars. John 8, 44. Again. Deceitful workers. Liars. John 8, 44. Deceit is when I try to sell you something and it's junk. It ain't worth it. Or I try to get you into a religion. It's not worth it. It's junk. Transforming themselves, the people, into the apostles of Christ. There's a church today, the apostles of the church, they say they are of the apostles. Absolutely not. They don't know what the Bible definition of apostles are. And they're right around the corner, I believe, from here. I think. I forget where they are. All right, so I'm ready. So verse 13 is followed by a bunch of liars. 14. And no marvel. Don't you marvel at this. Also, marvel... Where they come up with Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. That's a lie. There's no other Superman but Jesus Christ. That's right. S is for Savior. Their S is for stupid or Satan. <laughs> and no marmal for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I was there in my hospital bed and there's light came from me. You better watch out. That never says anything for a Christian. The Christian says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. That light at the end of the tunnel may be a train coming to whack you. Mm -hmm. Satan makes himself look like an angel. Now watch this. We're not done. So he's a liar. He makes himself look like a light. That he's not the true light. Jesus. Jesus is not an angel. You know religions that will put Jesus as an angel only? You better watch out. You better check your Bible twice. All right, so we're not done. Therefore, therefore, it is no great thing. Don't you marvel at this. If his ministers, who's the his? Run that back to 14, Satan. 
There are men in pulpits today, past, present, and future, that are Satan in the pulpit. Jesus said, warned of, of uh, men, men that are wolves in sheep's clothing. Transformed as the ministers of righteousness. They look like they're right. They talk like they're right. They look like they're right. Their sign says they are right, but they are ministers of Satan. Satan has an artificial life. It's called religion. And it drives you away from the true light, which is called Jesus. Now again, light, darkness. There's the true light, Jesus. Here's a false life. It's an angel. The Bible says about Satan in Ezekiel uh, 28, he's got all kinds of gemstones in his body too. And if you were to shine a light through him, he'd shine just like New Jerusalem. He would look like the high priest that had 12 stones on his breastplate. And if you were to shine a light through that, it would have a spectrum, uh, a prism. Satan is an imitation of Jesus Christ in light. He's an imitation of the high priest that has light. He's an imitation of New Jerusalem that has light. And he will try to get you to believe his light over the light, which will get you into darkness which you are already in darkness because you cannot come to light unless you come to Jesus Christ. Amen. He's got it down back and he's got people trapped. Do uh, we do 2 Corinthians 4, 6? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's Jesus coming. Ephesians 6, 12. He said we went to another... Ephesians 6.12. See, I, see, I know where some, some of the verses are. I just don't know exactly where they are. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, if you know it's First or Second Corinthians 11, go over to All right, check it out. It's not in that 11. It's got to be the other 11. And if it's not in the other 11, oops, I know it's in there. You can know the general location. So Ephesians 6.12. Again, we're looking at the light and darkness. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not duking it out right now. We're not fighting amongst people. We're not boxing. We're not wrestling. We're not fighting. We're not conflicting. We're not shooting at anybody. No, that's what the world is doing today. All right. But against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness of this world. That's satanic powers. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, you're going to probably start seeing this as you, as you witness. We've seen this many times at the flea market. People come to us, we'll talk, they'll be talking to us. We'll be talking to them, showing them gospel tracks, training. And then somebody, come over here, look, look, look at this thing over here. Oh, honey, come over here. You guys see this? That's powers and principalities. Hard. I don't. We don't want that guy to hear that gospel. Mm -hmm. There will be things that happen. There will be bumps in the night. There will be televisions. And when you've done any public ministry, you will see the forces of Satan out there trying to stop it. Mm -hmm. And there is a true fact that can be said. There are Christians out there. And I'm not one of them. That when they get up in the morning, the devil's in hell tremble. Because that guy's going to go out and do the work, the Lord's work and he's going to do it faithfully. Mm -hmm. And there are some Christians that get up in the morning and the devil's not snares. We don't need to worry about it. We ought to have an active life where the devil's in that. we got to track about that. that. You know what? At least some of the devil say, at least some of the devil say, you know what? i got to follow him. i got to try to stop him. Now we conquer here with the wind. Is that God or is that Satan trying to stop him? I don't know. I, I can't. I can't answer that question. But there'll be things going on, and it may be the devils trying to stop. And that's one of the battles we have. That'd be one of the battles. You're all by yourself. You want to do right. You're reading the Bible, and Satan puts you in. Could you really believe that? Oh, that's the hardest one I gotta fight. You'll be, you'll be in prayer and that indecent, vile, wicked sin comes in your prayer. Oh, that's Satan. 
that's Satan. You'll be doing something and saying, well, what about that sin? Oh, God, I'm so sorry. And God's like, I've already forgiven you for it. Knock it off. That's Satan. And then Satan comes along, and here comes this big, massive biker. I mean, he's... God says, give him a gospel track. Uh -uh. Give him a gospel track. Oh, no, you're going to beat me up. That's Satan work. And if you give in, you get that guy, oh, thank you very much. I'd really like to get stuff like that. You know? Get that cashier gospel track. Say that to that person. And then the realms of Satan. Satan cannot get you unsaved, but he can try to get you unfellowshipping with God. He can get try to get God unpleased with you by your conduct. And he does have an army called devils. And they are fighting against you. If they're not fighting against you, you need to check your Christian conduct in your life. Because you ought to have trials and tribulations. And the Bible says, Marvel not the world hates you, and he that... Uh, oh, that verse always quote. What's that verse? He that will uh, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And we suffer persecution again, testimony last Friday, and God sent the Christian to had no idea what he was saying, had no idea what he was doing, and comforted us and what the trials we got. It's great when you get bashed in the face and God says, okay, now take this. Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13. You guys got some good notes in this Bible. Mm -hmm. now, I just bought this Bible somewhere because it's got great concordance in it. He's got his notes in here. 113. 113. And one more verse after this. Colossians 113. Who God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated, not transformed, translated, changed. Not, you know, you make yourself, listen, that transformer changes a car into a robot and it's still a car. Translated. I am no more a child of Satan. I am been translated to the kingdom Amen. of God through Jesus Christ, who has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm not Satan and I'm not God. I am not a child of Satan. I'm not a child of God. I am a child of God. I have not been translated. I have been trans I'm, I have not been transformed. I've been translated. When you take a foreign language and you translate it into another language, you don't keep the original language. Right. So when I received Christ as my Savior, I did not keep any of Satan. Now in this flesh I may show the work of darkness, which we all do, we're all sinners, but that day when I'm raptured or I'll be present with the Lord, all be gone. it's all gone Amen. to sins. No more, absolutely no more failure in God. I become, I become complete. Right now I'm incomplete. God's still working on me. Yeah, me too. It's a wonderful thing. Satan will transform himself and his people to lie. But they'll go right back to where they are. If that preacher is of Satan in the pulpit, he's transformed himself. Oh, holy baloney, full of roses and tulips, and we're going to have a great Father's Day service this week and give them all little pencils and magic markers and all kinds of goodies stuff for Father's message. It's going to be so great. And then he'll go right back in eternity as a servant of devil in darkness. Last place, 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. 1 People don't realize how wicked religion is. So we've gone today from darkness to light. We're all, we're all in the light here. And uh, hopefully today what you learn, you grow, you gain even more light. And you know Satan's afraid of us learning the Bible. He has to. This morning was so hot, and look how beautiful it is now. Yeah, I know. God is so great. Am I not? Oh yeah, First Thessalonians. I hate how they do the type. <laughs> no, because I'm in First Thessalonians, but the top of the Bible says Second Thessalonians because it's it's right there. It messes me up all the time. First Thessalonians five five. It's in the New Testament. I know. It was 
Again, we, we cannot fathom Thank you. what heaven, no, 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 heaven's just too simple. What New Jerusalem's going to be like. We can't. Okay. My wife one day is going to see her husband yeah. perfect. I'm going to see her perfect. New bodies, no wrinkles, no oil and leg, no booze, no bars. We'd be all listening to the gospel. There'll be no one there that will ever reject the gospel. Ye, that's us, are all children of light. The children of the day. Do you, I dare go back to Genesis 1 and show you where that day is? How's that? So see, Genesis 1 is alive through the Bible. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. I'm not satanic. I'm not Satan. I'm not devilish. I am not a devil. Someone called me apostate. No, I'm not. Mm. My Jesus. father is God. And there is no way ever could I lose my salvation. I'm light. And the problem with God's light in us, there's no switch to flip it off. And it shines in our... Now, that light that showed up in Genesis 1, who has ever turned it off? It has not been turned off. I believe it's going to be turned off at the tribulation period. When Satan reigns. So the darkness is of Satan. And the light is God. And if we are of the light through Jesus Christ, I'm going to let my little light shine, but we're not going to go out. Never. We are not going to be extinguished. Amen. Though Satan killed the body, be absent with the body and present with the Lord. Be better. Amen. Lord God, thank you for the light. Lord, I, I can't even adjust my thinking and my to what holiness you're going to give us. What wonderful and blessedness and great and wonderful and terrific and and we're not worthy. We are absolutely not worthy. You could have left us in the dark. We could have stayed in the dark and had no idea in hell with this suffering. But by the light of Jesus Christ, by the gospel, are we saved, Lord. And I pray, Lord, please bring others out. Help us to find a better place, Lord God. Help us to build a church here. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen.